hard coach. Well, um, obviously two good wins to start off the tournament. How's the team feeling heading into this week, especially with the, the travel and the rest of the week ahead? Well, I think we're excited that we are advancing. Um, you know, it's not easy to get to a sweet 16 and the way that we performed. Um, I was very pleased with our mentality the second night and, and how we went about our routines and our business. And, uh, you know, that the way that they played was um, impressive to me, but now it's a new week and we've got to get that rhythm back in a new gym and uh, be ready for Michigan. Uh, Jared, from what you've been able to tell the last couple of days, what do you know about Michigan? What kind of what kind of challenges do you expect to see from this team? Yeah, you know, they're a very good team. You know, the, the Big Ten obviously is the strongest conference in the country right now. Um, I know that they went five with Illinois, who's the number three seed, 15, 13, the fifth. They lost in five to Wisconsin, and they beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin. So um, we've got a lot of respect for them. Uh, you know, Mark Rosen uh, and I go way back. Uh, He's done a really good job with that team. They're a very straightforward team, like a lot of the great teams. Uh, they're good at what they do, and uh, they execute at a really high level. Um, you know, they've got two premier outside hitters that are going to be a handful, um, and we're going to try to do our best to to put ourselves in position to defend. Yeah, since they do play in the Big Ten, is their record a little deceptive? Do you kind of have to throw out like a seven-place standing or their record since they do play in the Big Ten? Yeah, if I'm wrong and you can do a little research but I believe the last time they were seventh they played us in the semifinals of the at the final four so yeah they're capable of doing that uh, there's there's so many good teams out there and so many good arms and so many good coaches that you know with the way that our sport is scored and it's played um, you know upsets are part of it and uh, they're well they're they're one of the four teams in our bracket that is capable of getting to the final four we talked a lot about the freshmen this year um, what did you see from them over the first two rounds, especially Logan? Yeah, I think there was a little bit of nerves the first night, uh, but I think it was the entire team as a, as, a, as a whole scope. And, you know, the second night I thought they came in a lot more confident. Uh, I think they were ready to play. They knew what to expect. Uh, they were excited and uh, played at a really high clip. I mean, obviously Logan put up some spectacular numbers that night uh, and had a great weekend for us. Um, but I thought Sydney played really well. I thought Jenna set well. Uh, I thought Bree was really, really good at times and uh, carried us in portions of our match when we needed her. Um, so I was excited. And, uh, you know, obviously the upperclassmen did a great job and, and kept the glue together. It seems kind of silly to be asking this about a two time All American, but how much has Kaya evolved this year and grown um, throughout her junior year? No, I think it's a great question. I think one of the things that we were working on with Kaya so much is her six rotation play. You know, I think she's put a high level of premium in terms of becoming a great passer and she's now developed into a very solid and great six rotation player but I've seen some significant growth on the defensive side as well she's starting to pursue balls her touches are significantly better she's seen the game at a higher clip uh, and she's really developed um, and her offensive numbers have been better you know she continues to improve her kill percentage and her hitting percentage and overall has done a really good job with you know, the way that she sees the game, the way that she plays it, and emotionally she's much more invested this year. I don't, the way she serves seems very high risk, high reward. Yeah. Um, but in the Texas State match, I think it was nine straight points she served for. What have you seen from her on the, on the service line? Yeah, yeah I think her, her the, the most inconsistent skill set that Kay has had has been her serving. You know, it's, you know, whether it was standing on the ground, whether it was her float standing or jumping float serve, and now the, the jump top serve. Um, you know, it, it's been a work in progress for us. You know, she uh, did a really nice job on that run. I think she was really focusing on just having good hand on the ball and keeping the ball in play. And, um, you know, that one serve that was kind of really, really high that hit the player in the back um, was a ball that she was just attempting to keep in, which you want to do because your tosses are not always going to be consistent and in the right spot. But, you know, Hopefully she can do that again this weekend a couple times. So we'll take nine points in a row any day. As a whole, where do you guys feel you are on the service line, especially since the Stanford match where you guys had you know, the 17 errors? Yeah, I think we're obviously much better. We're serving tougher. You know, that was part of the, the process as a coach. You, you can dwell on your missed serves or you can continue at the kind of the, the strategy of, of what you need to get to to become an elite program. And so there's routines, there's expectations of what we want. We do not want them missing serves. 
but we don't want them to change their whole mentality and just kind of give them float serves and nice and easy that they'll take care of and then they'll side out a much higher percentage. So this now game, as we get into this regional now, the serving and passing becomes critical to your success. Uh, the teams that are going to serve and pass the best are going to be the teams that have the best chance to get through this regional because um, there's so many good players. But it's one of the things that fans really don't understand at a high level is that the serve and pass game becomes a critical part of your success. Offensively, what is this team doing better with uh, Jenna um, running the show? Well, I think there's a couple components. One is that Yazzie's healthy now. You know, she's in a groove and she's getting very confident in what she does. Um, her personality is better. Um, you know, but Jenna's been putting up a really good, consistent ball to all of our pin hitters, and and our setter and our setter uh, middle blocker relationship has been uh, stronger. And that was one of the big things, and one of the reasons that we made the switch was just the consistency of our middles had to be get more involved in terms of what we were doing. And I think they're taking better swings right now of, uh, with her in the game, and uh, she's done a nice job with her confidence and and adds a lot with the defense and serving too. There's some some th things that she'll give up with her blocking, but uh, she's made it up in certain other areas and. Uh, we're excited to see where she's at. Defensively, how have you guys adjusted to, obviously she's a little bit shorter than Ashley, how have you guys adjusted to that difference? Well, we go back to Chloe Collins, <laughs> the Chloe Collins defense. You know, we have a defense that's set up specifically for when Jen is in the front court. You know, we've got to be able to manage that and uh, play strong defense behind her. But, you know, that, that's a challenge. You know, and at some point that could get exposed and, you know, we're going to need Ashley to come in and play uh, if that happens. and. Um, We'll look at it and, and see what we need to make those adjustments on the fly. But, uh, you know, we were able to get the Final Fours and, uh, with Chloe and, and did some finals. So it's, it's more about how we can play behind that and function from a serving. That's where one of the serving aspects becomes um, critical because if Jenna's at her size, if we can serve where teams are, are passing off the net, uh, it's, uh, the kill percentage goes down because they're not right on top of Jenna. The sets are further off the net and gives us a greater chance to play defense. Coach, on Selection Sunday with a couple of the players that the said that, said that they did have that you know, kind of their chip on their shoulder, you know, felt like they had something to prove in, ter in terms of you know, being like you get in the post and not them. Uh, it, where, where, is that, where is that motivation and that chip on the shoulder now uh, heading in? Is it, is it where you want it to be in terms of this you know, this, this group feeling like that they have something to prove and go on the road and attempt I, I don't know if there's something to prove. You know, this is stuff that players want to make up or the media wants to make up. You know, for us, it's about process oriented. If a chip on your shoulder doesn't get you to the Final Four, you know, execution does. And so, um, and, and team unity and fight. And if that made them a little bit more focused, that's great. Um, but we haven't addressed it in that sense. We talk about process, we talk about routines, we talk about mentality, um, and that's all about to get tested at a very high level uh, in a foreign environment for us. So um, we're excited for that challenge and uh, look forward to, to hosting Mi Michigan. That's all we're talking about. We don't know what's going to happen on the other with the other two teams. You know, the only way that we get an opportunity to play one of them is by getting through Michigan, and that's not an easy task, and we're not taking that lightly. Yeah, I, I think the first night will be a little bit more quiet because there were no, no, none of the teams are at home. Um, if we are fortunate enough to move on and play in that, it's going to be it's one of the loudest and chaotic gyms in the country. Uh, everybody's right on top of you. So uh, Florida will get that the first night and we'll get a chance to kind of watch that. Um, but again, I, we'll see if we, we earn that right to be able to play in front of that environment. Do you use a... Um Previous experience, with, like you said, the first night when, when neither team has has the main draw of fans. Do you use previous experience to kind of get the, the team prepared for, for moments like that, where you have to create your own energy? Yeah, you know, we've had some matches like that. I think uh, at Stanford there was nobody there when we played them. Um, you know, we played High Point in front of nobody. Um, there's been a couple matches where. Um, there hasn't been a very big crowd and we've had to kind of create and, and do that. So I'm glad that we've been through that and they're aware of it. Uh, when we were talking about it this morning, I had a lot of players shaking their heads like they agreed and they knew what we were about ready to get into. So it's one of the benefits of playing in the schedule that we do. We just we try to put them in every environment that we're going to face, um, you know, from sometimes being quiet to the most chaotic environment. So they're battle tested and, and this, that's what this, this group needed because we are so young. And just for like a young team like this, talking about the environment, going on the road so much this year already in a lot of different environments, 
How much do you feel that's prepared him for a, a series of games, a game or games like this? Well, I hope it's prepared him a lot. You know, my experience is that with young players, you know, that even though they're really talented, they haven't seen the speed of the, or the consistency of this game. And when pressure is put on you, um, they tend to in, think individually about what they're doing wrong, or and they start getting a little bit more um, inner focused about what they're doing. And I think throughout the season, they've been a lot better at kind of giving to the team. Um, that's what it's going to take. If we if we start losing players because they're playing having one skill set that's that's poor, uh, we're going to be in trouble. And because um, you know this is a team sport, and they can make it up in many different areas. And the confidence and the fight and the way that they look at each other becomes a critical component to having success. And I guess um, one last thing. So this is more of like, kind of like a semantics question, but so um, in the in the last game against Texas State, you guys seemed um, I think Texas State almost had over 20 more a total attack attempts than you guys did. So are you guys more comfortable more playing a defensive game and then taking advantage of those opportunities that you get rather than controlling the ball? Do you guys feel like there's a certain type of game or rhythm that you guys are more comfortable with? Well, I think it's one is where we're, we're scoring real points. You know, they're having to take, you know, they're making a few more hitting errors. We have a few more blocks. Uh, we might have a few more aces. So you don't really look into the, the I never look at like our total attempts. You know, I'm looking at kill percentage, air percentage, uh, dig to kill percentage, serve receive percentage, serving percentage, um, and and how we're scoring and where we're scoring at to be able to be successful. It's it's not it's a game of possessions, but it's it, you, the total attempts get a little flawed. And, and the the way our statistical system is, when you look at it from a from a media standpoint or a fan standpoint, you'll play some teams that have a lot more digs than us. It's because they've been a lot more rallies, meaning that our kill percentage has been a little bit higher than some of the lower level teams. Uh, you know, if we play a lower level Division One team, they're going to—they're not as terminal, so the rallies go on a little bit longer. You know, as a coach, especially with your freshmen and playing so many, and I guess this is probably more of a Jenna and Logan question: How long of a leash do you give them in the postseason to feel their way out? Where still, I mean, you can't go with them too long if they're if they're struggling. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's my job, right? It's to, to try to you know, discuss this with our staff as it's going on and, you know, do I pull them out for two or three points and try to get them a breather? Um, you know, you try to recall, for me at least, what it was like to be an athlete at that time and, you know, sometimes they can get a little lightheaded and just pull them out and just kind of get them refocused can be a thing. Uh, sometimes you want them to go through it, you know. Uh, I pulled Jenna out in uh, the first night because I wasn't very pleased with her, her effort level, um, but I think that helped her kind of regain focus and know what she needed to do and uh, to compete. So. There's lots of scenarios that can play into it. You know, it's a game of momentum. So we realize that as a coaching staff. So we'll, we'll make subs or do lineup situations or, you know, try different tactical things to try to change that momentum over a period of time. But uh, if need be, yeah, we're, we're confident in what we can do by pulling them and putting the next players in and um, giving them some opportunities. Are there any adjustments you guys need to make as a team to adjust for the altitude or the gym this week? You know, the only adjustment we need to do is get in the gym a little bit more. You know, we're going to try to get at least three practice opportunities before we go. It's not going to be a drastic, drastic change. Um, you know, it might be, you know, a slight difference, but I think it just once they get in the gym and get contacts, they'll be fine with it. You know, it's a lot different in the men's game because they're jump serving so much, and so the ball's traveling a little bit faster, and um, those adjustments can happen. But we'll see how we kind of adjust to it, and it's part of the environment. It's, it makes it fun and enjoyable, and we're excited to get after it. Team-wise, is this team more relaxed this year, or is there a different mindset as opposed to maybe last year, where they're coming off the back-to-back -back title losses, and you know those seniors really wanted, you had know, come up short a couple times. Is there a different mentality this year with this team? Uh, every year is different. Um, last year, I just never felt like we just got into a, a groove. We just we were trying a lot of different things, and we just never got consistent over a period of time. You know, one of the few years that hasn't happened. I feel like with this team, we've started playing a lot better the last month. Uh, our numbers have skyrocketed. I don't know what they've been uh, exactly, um, but they've skyrocketed on the offensive side. Um, our passing has been more consistent. Uh, our defensive numbers have been a little bit more consistent at times because that's where we've been spending a lot of time. Um, and, you know, we feel good about it. I feel like the, the mindset, the leadership, the young players are having fun and they're relaxed. Um, they're nervous, but I told them that's good. If they're not nervous, then I'd be a little bit more concerned about 
where we were at. And so we'll just try to spend some time with them and let them understand that uh, we don't have to be perfect. That's the biggest thing that we've got to make sure that this team understands is that we don't need to be perfect to win. We need to be good enough that night and find a way. And if you, if you have that mentality, then you learn how to fight for each point. And I think it's, it's a lot better than trying to have perfection all the time. Would we like it? Absolutely. But uh, it's very few and far between that that happens. Anything else, guys? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.